Neovim is driving me crazy, but I can't stop. I can't stop, won't stop, never stop stopping. I never thought anyone could become addicted to configuring a terminal-based text editor, but here we are. If you have an addictive personality, I suggest you read this post with caution and let it serve as a warning sign, not as an encouragement. This is about my first few weeks of trying to configure Neovim and the emotional damage it caused me. Oh boy, this is going to be a good one. I can feel it. I can feel it in my bones, people. You know, the best part about these articles is that they start off good and they end good, right? It's not just, you don't just like start off on a banger and then slowly fall apart. It's going to be good all the way through. And I'm excited. I've been using VS Code for many years and I have been very, very happy with it. Okay, this is the start of tragedy. Here it comes. It's a lot faster and lighter than IDEs like Visual Studio or PyCharm, and it has extensions for every single little thing you can think of, and it just uh, lets me do work fast and well. This is true, but as you, every time you add an extension, it gets a little slower. I started recently watching the Prime Gen. Mention! I gotta mention! And found them extremely entertaining. Prime is like a less cheesy version of Dr. Disrespect. Damn! That might have been the greatest compliment I have ever received, ever. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to email my wife. Oh, my goodness. Instead of playing Fortnite with kids, Prime makes videos related to coding and serious stuff, but with an equally high entertainment value and great memes only geeks understand. Get him. Get him. Definitely didn't pre-read. Definitely didn't pre-read. First off, also, I love the doc. Okay, so... I love the doc, just letting you know. Neovim is a reoccurring subject in his videos, and Prime praises it to the moon. He even has a tutorial series about it. I've heard, him, uh, I've heard about Neovim before and understood that it's a terminal-based text editor that you can configure with different plugins and keyboard shortcuts, but I've always put it off as something that geeks use to help cure their inferiority complex by trying to deliberately make their colleagues uncomfortable when they share their screen at work. Yes! Yes, that run-on sentence was the greatest sentence I've ever read. Oh my goodness, it just kept going. It kept going. It kept going, but it was so good. When you whip out that terminal-based editor, like even if you get like an Emacs wizard or you get a, a Vim wizard and they whip it out and they're hopping around, you can look in the audience and like in the video call, there'll be three people like, you know, you can watch their seal of approval and then you watch other people going, Like, they're freaking out. Like, they can't handle what is going on on the screen. Like, they just, it's just, it's just too fast. The seal of confusion. Seal of approval, seal of confusion. It's so good. At first, I thought that the reason that Prime uses Neovim is just some gimmick to get more viewers. I mean, real talk? Uh, because watching someone code in Neovim certainly looks cool, but I doubted that one can actually be more productive in Neovim than VS Code. When it comes to tools and technology in general, I've always had quite a pragmatic mindset, and I have always been fine with using whatever gets the job done the quickest, because getting the job done is why we're using the editor in the first place. I love this take because that I, it's the pragmatic take. Just get the job done. The pragmatic take actually is the, not, is the, is the polar opposite of pragmatic. The pragmatic take that people always say they have is literally the opposite. Because what it means is I will look into nothing, I will try nothing else out, I will only use what was the first thing that I ever used that I'm baseline comfortable with, I'll never actually learn it to any extent, I'll put a bunch of extensions in it, use one third of the extensions, use the extensions that I do use at one third the power, I will just barely scrape on by because that's what I already understand. Pragmatism. Pragmatism. It's not pragmatism, boys. Okay. However, after watching and reading more about NeoVim and becoming more and more brainwashed by the NeoVim good VS Code bad memes, I've decided to try tinkering a little with NeoVim. And after all, what harm can it do? <laughs> oh my goodness, he, he, dude, he's getting he's getting Vim pilled. It's happening. It's it's happening live in front of us. I also somehow got convinced that NeoVim will help you do the job faster if you learn it well. This was enough for me to give it a try. If I don't like it, I'll just go back to VS Code. Oh, here it comes. Oh, no. Here it comes. Oh, no. There are two non-user audience for VimChads. Those with dropped jaws and, uh, and those shaking their head and rolling their eyes. That's right. Pragmatism is when I don't try. Easy. Often I find that to be true. <clears throat> um... My first step was to Google how to get started with NeoVim, and I found a post on r slash NeoVim where someone complained about not being able to configure uh, NVChad properly. A few a fellow Redditors suggested that NVChad can be too difficult for a beginner and suggested they should use AstroVim instead. NVChad and AstroVim are NeoVim distros that come pre-configured. By the way, if you're going to start, please, everybody, 
kick start. If you're going to start using NeoVim, this is the greatest project to start from, kickstart.neovim. It is just a singular file, a singular Lua file that has an enormous amount of comments about every last part of it, about getting a plugin manager going, about configuring an LSP, about using mouse to do this, about setting the terminals, about setting this, to get telescope set up, to get these things set up. It is very, 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 very good. I would highly recommend it. A fellow Redditor said, okay, I already did that. NV Chad and AstroVim are uh, distros that come pre-configured. Using a distro sounds great. So based on that information from a random stranger, I, f I figured that Astro NeoVim is a good place to get started. Uh, get a function config up and, uh, and ready without having to spend too much time on configuration. Okay, this is where it falls apart. It does not come with Harpoon, uh, which is, I honestly think Kickstart should come with Harpoon. Okay, I love Harpoon. After tinkering with Astro NeoVim a little and doing things like switching color themes, trying to figure out which colors will make me write the best code, and trying to understand how the hell you even save a file, I started getting a little bit more comfortable with it, and even started to realize the idea why mouseless development is something to strive for. This is actually a great takeaway right here. This is actually a really good takeaway. Even if... Even if you never use Vim again and use it for a little bit, why mouseless development is something to strive for is actually really, 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 really good. Uh, we'll talk about Harpoon later. Uh, let's see. I, however, producing some actual code was out of the question. <laughs> Ridiculous. Uh, as there was always some functionality that I missed or a hotkey that I didn't know, if I could just find out what the hotkey is, I, I guess I'm calling them hotkeys is wrong, but that's what they are, uh, was I asked Google how to set the hotkey, but there seemed to be different ways and just understanding in which file to put the uh, key binding snippet was hard. Yes, uh, the general first impression was that NeoVim is clunky and difficult, even though I used pre-configured distro, but I put it down to a skill issue. Good call, good call. And I was not ready to give up and go back to VS Code yet. Love the determination. I love the determination, absolutely. I do think starting with a, a distro is actually really hard. Because not only do you have to learn how to configure NeoVim, you have to learn how to configure NeoVim in someone else's already configured way. Like, I mean, AstroVim is great, but still, you have to figure it out. LazyVim is great, uh, it is Falke. Falke is great. What distro do you use? But you still have to figure out how Falke does it. And Falke is a genius, okay? Uh, number three, frustration of masses. After spending some hours trying and failing to install things I was missing, like linters, etc., I blamed it on AstroVim not being well documented and decided to give NV Chat a try. Maybe taking advice from random strangers on the internet does not always pay off. And... <laughs> Envy Jad seemed to have better documentation with the cheat sheet for hotkeys and all, and so it seemed great. And I also found a video on YouTube setting up Envy Chad for Python, which was a great bonus since I'm primarily doing Python coding. However, the person in the YouTube video was using Null LS, which is now archived. This is true, and didn't have a clue uh, what to replace it with. I think there's actually a, now a community version of Null RS, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, mistaken. Uh, Null, Null LS is the world's worst problem to solve. It is why. VS Code, VS Code can do it because they have 30 people working on VS Code full-time. And so by having full-time people, they can. They, there's literally a group of people that just resolve the differences between formatters, prettiers, and uh, your editor. And it's, it's actually an extremely difficult problem. I don't have, that's why I love formatting through the LSP. I think the LSP should be the one that drives that. And that is the problem with JavaScript predominantly is because JavaScript doesn't own the tools, so your LSP TS server does not own the prettier or the linter. And so that thing just totally gets effed up, right? The whole thing gets messed up because now when you use JavaScript, you have to go and you have to like have all this extra configuration. Whereas when you use Go, you use Rust, they come with all this stuff already pre-built in and that way formatting and linting and everything is done through the LST. Mwah. It is so dang good, okay? Uh, why Rust Anal is awesome. Wait, what? Why did I read that out loud? However, the person in the YouTube video was using... Oh, yeah, we already did that. I found some random solutions like Prettier and others, but there was like seven different ways to install them, and I could not get any of them to work, so I failed miserably at that too. I felt helpless, and I had so many questions that Google did not seem to be able to answer. I did not have a clue how NeoVim really works. What, what is lazy? What is Mason? Uh, what's the difference between the two? And what the hell is an LSP anyway? See, these are great questions, and this is one of the problems about only working in uh, VS Code. You don't even know what an LSP is, right? You should know what an LSP is.
Chapter 4, Accepting Defeat. After being in a dark place for a while, I went back to VS Code where I installed the Vim plugin. Oh, this is actually a great way to get started. Great way, by the way. Never go full Vim. You never go full Vim, right? You first go Vim Motions. Learn Vim Motions, get good at Vim Motions, and when you're feeling froggy, then you jump into Vim, where now you're not learning two things at once, you're learning one thing at once. And that's a big difference. It's a huge, huge difference. And configured the motions I wanted. I felt like, uh, I felt, uh, let's see, I felt like by using the Vim plugin, I had at least taken a tiny steps away from the Soy Boys and toward the NeoVim chat. Let's go. I set up my custom key bindings for VS Code and tried to force myself to skip the mouse as much as possible. I found that I could actually get some coding done and became a better at uh, using the Vim motions as well. My body and my brain, who have been uh, so used to using the mouse for such a long time, were slowly getting accustomed to using primarily the keyboard to navigate VS code. I felt relief. I was finally physically and mentally able to produce code, and I had the shiny new Vim plugin in VS Code that was at least a little bit cool, and it would give me the same alleged productivity benefits over time. This is good. I mean, it's honestly, this is a great place to be. This is a great first step. However, there was still a bitter taste in my mouth after having tasted the mythical NeoVim world and being close to achieving a coding nirvana. All I could see and feel when I closed my eyes at night was the sweet uh, cat, uh, cat puchin theme by the way it's not called cat pussin okay though i think it should be called cat pussin it's cat put chin should be cat pussin uh theme and i was navigating my dreams with vim motions it's cat pussin uh i dreamed about the feeling of invincibility i would get the idd cutie the classic idd cutie i would get from doing all my coding in the terminal without having to use a clunky electron app that doesn't even use tree sitter Great point right there. I felt like someone, uh, I felt like something was missing. A part of me had awakened that I could not become silenced by a simply VS Code extension. I needed more. <laughs> okay, well, I didn't see, I, okay, I didn't see chapter five's heading. Again, this is not pre readed. You never go full, going full Vim. We'll call it going full Vim. Uh, Monka TOS going on right now. Did not see this happening. I plan to do some coding this weekend as I have been trying to learn some new web development concepts for now, uh, for a while now. Uh, I read that wrong. Whatever. You get the idea. You get the, you get the idea. I had nothing extra planned and a lot of hours to spend on improving skills that would perhaps advance my career. I don't do much real coding in my day job, so I enjoy working on fun projects in my spare time and learning new things. On Friday evening, I opened my terminal and created the folder structure for my new web development project. When I was about to press enter after typing code dot to open my true friend VS Code, something snapped in my head. I stared at the command for about 10 seconds, deleted it, and typed NeoVim dot and pressed enter. In what seemed like less than a millisecond, that beautiful cat puss and theme popped up that I had configured some weeks ago, and I knew there was no turning back. VS Code can suck it. Such a plot twist. I did not see this coming. This is like M. Night Shyamalan. This is M. Night Shyamalan level signs material here. We got Mel Gibson helping writing scripts right now. Next, I went uh, to Google to find out how to configure NeoVim for TypeScript since I'd be learning this as part of my web development project. Okay, went hard mode. Went hard mode. Uh, I could not find any meaningful answers that were applicable to my config, so I stumbled in the dark for some time trying different things with Mason. Mason's a pretty cool little program. I read somewhere that TypeScript language server is what you need, so I tried installing that, and Mason uh, said it got installed. But when I tried applying LSP formatting while my TS file was open, it only said something... Uh, in the style of no LSP found. Okay, yep, yep. The frustration was rising again, and after some failed attempts at debugging this and trying to understand what the different config files were even doing, I decided to, I need to learn this from scratch. I had no idea what the code I had gotten from YouTube video was doing, and w I was obviously lacking some foundational knowledge about Vim to be able to fix my problems. This is good. Okay, good. You should start, should try to start from the beginning, don't get overwhelmed. I found some good tutorials on LSP0 repository that actually explained some key concepts that I managed to quite quickly get working uh, config that looked good. However, all my code was in a init.lua file, so that felt a little bit off-putting and homemade. This is good. This is really good. This is really, really good. I like where we're at right now. I found another tutorial on configuring NeoVim from scratch, and now I have spent six hours going through the first 18 minutes of the video. I've deleted my config NeoVim twice and started over. My brain was trying to tell me that it's stupid to waste this much time on getting an editor configured, and although I feel sick, I, physically qu I can't physically quit. I've come too far. Now to turn back. All right, yes. Conclusion, chapter six. 
I'm unsure if it falls under stupidity or insanity. My goal right now is to get working config that I'm satisfied with during this weekend. And if I get some real coding done as well, then it's a big plus. Right now, I regret I did not stay in VS Code. <laughs> Dude, this guy has regrets. The man's regretting right now. Live regretting happening. Not he's so He regretted so hard. He wrote a six-chapter book, dropped it on the internet, threw it on my, uh, my Reddit, and then called it a day. Love the candor. The candor is great, but I have spent too many hours now to go back. Let's see. If there are any others that uh, are failing at NeoVim at this very moment, hit me up on this. By the way, please, please use Kickstarter. If you're listening to this, uh, Gaiden, 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 uh, please do it. Call him. Help him. Uh, and share your story and possibly resources used to stop failing at NeoVim. If I ever get this configured, I might make a post about how to do it properly. I think TJ would be fantastic at getting him on there. Regert driven development's a real thing. Neovim does not fail. Watch TJ's A Bash to Basic series. Yeah. Gaiden chortling hard. There's a lot of chortling going on right now. A lot of chortling. One does not chortle simply. Uh, this is a great article. And honestly, this expresses also my frustrations in 2016 trying to learn what a Vim script was and trying to like do this Vim thing and doing it as like minimally as possible and just learning small parts. I really recommend, see the problem is, is that again, I also got to grow up in the era of non LSPs. LSPs were just getting started back then. So almost nothing had an LSP. And so, you know, you didn't really expect strong autocomplete in JavaScript. Uh, even using IntelliJ, it still wasn't that great. There was like all these things that I kind of got to get started with that I think made learning Vim easier. Cause I didn't have to, I didn't have to set up everything. You know, I only had to set up some things. And it just got, it was just really, really nice to slowly kind of get introduced to this. And yeah, I did a video zero to LSP. I thought that was good. It really is high speed. It's fantastic. Um, and HTMX is great. The name is I just mentioned HTMXogen. So therefore, Warren Buffering has to take a shot. 